So the Monotype Illuminati, aka the Viabilities Ranking Council, have released the Viability Rankings for Generation 9 Monotype, which is basically the tier list for every single Pokemon in every single type. Now, I've gone over this and unfortunately, the King of the Kingdom does not agree with some of the stuff that they put out. So I have to inform the masses of what really is going on here. So yeah, my I've been doing, you know, tier lists for, you know, different types and Gen 9 Monotype. Type. and obviously the viability rankings basically take their place now but i'm not gonna lie man some of that stuff yeah i, I just don't agree with so we're gonna be covering that today but yeah if you guys enjoy this one consider joining the kingdom one 219 subscribers road to 1000 at the end of 2023 much appreciated much appreciated but either way let's get into each type uh i'll try not to spend too long on each type i don't want this video to be too long necessarily but it's more of i'll leave timestamps in the description for each type and i'll basically just talk about it uh, there are some types that i am more i feel more strongly about because i use them more often than other types so or like i won't care about a type like eg bug like I, I don't use bug that much in gen 9 i've used it a little bit but due to like the small pool of pokemon like it's, it's pretty obvious what you should be running on bug and like there isn't much here that i really disagree with now like, we could look back at my uh what do you call it bug tier list video i have it on my other screen and it's basically accurate to what this is basically saying but they don't really have spy dots ranked which is fair i don't really have spy dots ranked either it's kind of bad but the the S tiers, the Sis and Volcarona. Um, I, I mean, this is fine to like. It's not that much different from my bug tier list. Like, I put Volcarona and Sis in A tier just because I thought Lockix at the time was still like pretty like done you know the best one on bug but these two are obviously super strong pokemon in their own right so fair enough that they're in s rank a rank makes perfect sense to me as well really lockix leveling fortress b heracross and vivalon yep i mean pretty accurate enough as well but i do think that the only reason why Heracross is an A is because Sliverwing is an A. You know, Sliverwing is slightly slower, but even then, like, it has access to U-turn, so it's a more consistent Scarfer, you know. Like, Heracross does have Moxie, but, you know, just having that pivot in moving U-turn does make a huge difference for Bug. Um, C with Rabscar and uh, these guys, like, I'm not going to lie... Webs is still a decently viable strategy for bug teams to run. Like I've seen a lot of uh, Webs bugs team. So I, like having Vivalon as the best Webber, I'll probably put in the same like rank as Heracross and Vivalon because it's actually kind of relevant to the typing. Uh, Rabska as well probably would put in B. Revival Blessing is still a move though. It's like Rabska is still a pretty average Pokemon, all things considered. But Revival Blessing shouldn't really put in c rank to be honest like I, I don't know it's also like bugs like you know second best special attacker and like volk like you can actually break things with rabska but ocarina kind of has to set up a little bit which again isn't necessarily difficult but it's just you know rabska has 115 special attack it actually has like things like energy ball to hit things like dondozo it has like just hitting physical walls that obviously sizzle like there's a lot that bug can't break through on the physical side you have things like you know great tusk you have um even even clod side like bug can actually not really hit clock side that well on the physical side other than like lock kicks which is kind of insane but things like typings like ground water like having something like rabska is actually kind of nice so you know I, I would put in b but everything else is pretty accurate enough i suppose like you're not ranking things like cricket to invest because they're they're just pretty much useless so i mean it's fair enough now onto dark now dark is interesting uh because dark is obviously one of the better typings in the meta so i would expect the monotype illuminati to have a bit more of an idea of a you know like a more accurate representation on the meta because some types i'm convinced that s some of these guys like no offense don't use the type really so like at least with dark everyone kind of uses dark so we understand things now Chiampao and tinglu in uh, in s like I, I don't really disagree with that like after using chen pao more and more i'm using dark uh teams to get requirements for the suspect test that's happening right now chen pao is kind of stupid i'm not gonna lie it's easily s tier tinglu as well like required on dark teams you you want these two on your dark team uh grimstar on a makes sense i did put an s just because it enabled you know ho styles but i feel like 
uh, dark teams can slowly shift away from those sort of styles. Like, it's not as strong as it was in the early mag since people have, like, kind of adapted. Like, don't get me wrong, like, screens on dark is still pretty strong, but you don't necessarily need Grimstone on your team, especially when, like, in terms of what Grimstone's role is doing other than screens is the fact that it's a dark type that's neutral to fighting. And obviously you have access to things like Sableye, which is also an A rank, which I agree with as well, which offers a fighting immunity, which I do think in certain matchups, particularly against fighting, like, it gives you a pretty good chance compared to, you know, having Grimstone take, like, 70 from, like, a great Tusk CC and, like, Sableye, I can do the same job as well because you know it's a prankster mon that has a uh, dual screens but obviously grim is the superior screener so there's things like that a rank hydragon I, I don't know about hydragon i, I don't know it, it's tough for me because i i i low-key prefer jugglers which is actually kind of insane and i call jugglers hydragon 0.5 all the time but i actually do prefer jugglers like you you are a flying type so that means oh my voice almost went there for a second my bad um you're a flying type so you're not you know weak to mop punch like you still take mop punch pr not too well but at least you're not getting no good by like things like brelum because like in the sense where you're running hydragon over juggles is the sense that you know if you see brelum you kind of just have to pray you know you like sack your tinglu to sleep maybe go out onto sableye and try and burn or if he tries to sd or something like you kind of have to pray for that but uh, if you manage to get the burn off, at least, you know, Jugglist wouldn't get okayed by uh, Mark Punch. But someone like Hydreigon is perfectly capable of getting okayed by Mark Punch. But it's still a good Pokemon. I, I just think it's B-ranked, to be honest. And Jugglist shouldn't be C. But uh, we'll get on to that soon. King Gambit in A makes sense. Miascarada in A makes sense. They're pretty standard dark Pokemon. b rank we have Vroom Moon and Skuntank. Now, Skuntank being in B kind of confuses me just a little bit. I, I don't really know. To be, I don't really rate Skuntank's niche that much, to, to be honest, on Dark. Like, I, I don't really know what this one is really offering Dark. That's, like, too important. Like, I suppose, you know, again, it's a Dark type that's no weak to fighting. And, you know, I can... I, I, I And it helps with the Fairy matchup, I guess. But I, I, I don't know. Like, Skuntank is... I mean, I did put him B in my tier list video. But, again, like... Having only Roar and Moon and Skuntank in the same tier and Jugglist is in C makes no sense. Especially when we go on to C now, like, Jugglist in the same rank as Brute Bonnet is, like, disingenuous. I'm not going to lie. This is complete slander. <laughs> it's complete slander. Jugglist in the same rank as Crocodile and Weavile and Wo Chen. Like, you're tripping. Now, I tried Wo Chen a little bit. Like, again, I said it was almost dog water. Loki kind of is on dark. Uh, alongside things like Brute Bonnet, but like Jugglish should at least be B rank. I really, really is getting disrespected here. I'm not gonna lie. The Illuminati need to come together to, you know, free up my man Jugglish. But yeah, that's it for Dark. Nothing too out of the ordinary other than like Jugglish being in C rank, where things like Wu Chen are like and Weavile, that, that, that's just, that's just awful. Uh, Dragon, on the other hand, I made my Dragon tier list. Um, it was hard for me to actually make a dragon tier list, I think, because, um, what was I going to say? So I have the dragon tier list, and obviously Dragapult, Psychazar, and Backscalibur, like, th this makes sense. Like, I'm not going to have any issue with most of these guys, to be honest, like, not too many changes, like, these three are obviously the best. That makes sense, B-Rank makes sense. Haxorus, well, I would argue Haxorus could potentially be in B rank but at the same time like his niche is already fulfilled by Backscalibur is fulfilled by D Knight like you don't really need to run Haxorus so I, I guess it's in C but Moldbreaker getting past unaware mons like Don Dozo Skeledurge that is something that Backscalibur does not have so like it's still a mon that deserves to be ranked um obviously here Altari isn't ranked which makes sense I also agree with that so onto Electric now here's where my discrepancies come because I have used Electric a good amount. I like the type. I think it's pretty decent. But the way that they've disrespected some of my guys here is insane. Now, the first thing I want to say is Iron Hands in S and Rotom Wash. Rotom Wash in S, I have no issues with. Iron Hands is obviously the best one on Electric. No, hand, uh, no doubt about that. But in A, we get to A rank and I'm just like, bro, Iron Fawns in A rank? You're tripping. There's no way this one makes it to A rank. Now, I've explained in the Electric tier list video, I I'm just going to keep plugging my videos because at least these are the types I've done as we go down into the list I haven't made 
uh, to this videos yet, but Iron Thorns runs into a pretty annoying issue. It's ground weakness. You're like a lot of things carry earthquake, you know, coverage, and you're you're pretty much just forced to run balloon all the time. Like I can respect that. Maybe the Illuminati saw that running Dragon Dance is a decent set because Dragon Dance is a decent set. Like it actually hits hard. Like still Tyranitar at the end of the day with just the worst uh, defensive typing in my opinion and no Sandstream. But um, yeah, other but like A rank like in the same like vein as Porma and Sandy Shocks, Iron Thorns just not does not reach that efficiency or like utility whatsoever like magna zones there is a steel type it you know his defensive typing is solid pormot has revival blessing sandy shocks you know has hazards it does damage you know it threatens ground as an electric type pokemon like that is a like it threatens clodsire to be fair but you know it can threaten ground and at the same time like iron thorns like its weaknesses let it down a lot it's too slow I don't know, it's not it's not that efficient enough to be A rank in my opinion. Now I would put in B like I did in my video, but like I don't I don't think it should be any lower, but it should definitely not be A rank. This is way too high. Um in B rank, uh Pink Urchin, uh I'm not gonna lie, Pink Urchin isn't B rank. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna say and tell you electric terrain teams are good right now, they're they're really not. Pink Urchin is a dead weight mon, all things considered, it deserves to be in C. Like literally all it does is come in, set to electric terrain, and offers nothing to the game. It really does nothing. Like, it has hazards, but so it does Sandy Shocks. Like, fair enough, you want to try and make Cork Drive Iron Thorns work or Cork Drive Iron Hands, but it isn't enough. Like, you're wasting the space on Pink Urchin when it could be something like Electrode, not Electrode, my bad, Electros, uh, or something like that. I, I don't know, Pink Urchin is definitely in C for me. Um, now, on to C rank. Now, here's my issues now. Kilowattro and Electros's placements are way too low. I'm not gonna lie, Electros should be a B rank low balling minimum. Like to make sure I'm not like tripping too much, but Electros should be A in my opinion. Ele Electros has saved electric teams for me. Like this thing's like utility, its ability, it, it comes so much in clutch for electric because you do have your immunities, you have the electric flying. Uh, to ground you have Rotom Wash which is the best Rotom form has Levitate. Electros has Levitate and doesn't have to worry about other weaknesses. Like do you know how good that is? Now I talked about Rotom Mo and I talked about Rotom Heat in my video and obviously they come with their own issues. You know like Rotom Heat is read to what rocks it gives you know a water. It, it makes your matchup worse against water even though you're electric. Rotom Mo has the best you know ground matchup out of the Rotom forms but you know, grass isn't a good defensive typing. You're bundled with a poison weakness. You get ice weakness. You're more vulnerable to fire, and you and you can't run Rotom Wash to you know help out with that because of species clause. Electros. If you want to have Rotom Heat and Mo combined into one Pokemon, run Electros. You have electric. At, you have grass and fire coverage. Your bulk. You have bulk. You have Volt Switch. And I and I don't know. I feel like no one has respected Electros here. And Killer Watchers placement, the fastest one on the vast, the fastest viable Pokemon on Electric being in C rank makes no sense either. It, it makes zero sense. Now you could argue that you know Sandy Shocks is the superior special attacker, but uh, Killer Watchers dual stabs are pretty hard to switch into. All things considered, I'm not gonna lie. Like literally, only like Electric has a Soul type resist them, and like you know. If you're facing electric, you'll have other ways of dealing with electric, e.g. E sandy shocks. Like, come on now. So, like, the only reason why Pom Pom is here is because of Defog potential. But even then, Defog isn't enough. You could say, oh, the screen's electric, so you can run Quiver Dance or a Karoo. But again, it's still, like, just kind of bad. Like, I prefer Killer Watch over or a Karoo Pom Pom any day of the week. I'm not going to lie. So, yeah, electric is, like,. Electros is way too low. Iron Thorn should be in B tier. Kilowattro should also be in B tier. Um, no, I'm saying uh, Electros should be in A. Kilowattro should be like B, like maximum. It shouldn't be in C. And everything else is just kind of obvious, so I'm not going to go into it. But yeah, uh, Fairy, on the other hand, nothing too out of the ordinary here. It makes sense, you know. Mimikyu A, these guys, and it like is is obvious. Like, there's nothing in Fairy that I really want to, you know, argue about. Like, 
not having Dutch Bun and Flo is ranked makes sense to me. And yeah, there's not much else to go into here. Fighting, on the other hand, fighting was interesting because um, if I recall correctly, if I look at my fighting tier list, if I can find it on the other screen. So it, it didn't save. Oh, well. But um, yeah, let's look at it. I mean, I kind of remember where everything is placed and gen my general opinions on things. But great task, Iron Hands Valiant, S rank, perfect sense. I, I have no issues with that. Brelum in A, Kokwevel uh, in A makes sense to me. All of these also make sense to me as well. And then C rank kind of makes sense as well because you really don't need Pormo on fighting. I'm not going to lie, Revival Blessing isn't all that on fighting. I'm not going to lie, Pormo is generally just worse iron hands in terms of what it does on fighting and you know stacking identical dual typings is never really a necessarily a good idea really so you know uh you don't really need poor more heracross and medicham as well that also makes sense uh interesting to see the water taurus not being ranked but i guess kokwevel kind of just takes its place and fire taurus is generally just the better pokemon and then like the rest of the guys like people like uh Pissimian, uh phalanx flamigo these mons aren't ranked so that makes sense uh fire hmm interesting now um Toko in s volcarone in s makes complete sense Cinderace in A tier, I think it's a bit too early to say, but even then, I don't believe Cinderace is A tier. While Tauros fires in B, like, no, I, I don't agree with that. Like, Cinderace overall, like, offers less to the type, and the only thing that it offers over Tauros fire is uh, Court Change, which is actually a decent game changer, but otherwise, like, Cinderace's Libero Nurse have really hit it hard this gen. Tauros. Fire has will o -Wisp, it has Intimidate, can obviously stop screens, offense from types like Dark and Fairy pretty darn well, even Ghost as well. Like, the only thing that checks Tauros Fire on Ghost is like Skeledurge and potentially Palo Sand, but you don't see Palo Sand on, you know, Ghost screens. And also, it can't be like, it's a physical attacker that can't be burned. Like, you know, it's definitely better than Cinderace, in my opinion. And a lot of people have discussed, at least when Cinderace came out on Monotype, that. Like, this thing is fighting for a slot with Taurus Fire, so I don't really see why Cinderace is A. Like, it'll, it'll definitely drop at one point or another, in my opinion. Um, Talonflame and Rotom Heat. Um, you could justify that one of these could be A rank just because they offer that ground immunity that Fire pretty much needs in order to not fall to ground immediately but at the same time b is a pretty safe placement for them and then c rank is like these guys which is fair enough like armorage is pretty niche uh arcanine is also pretty niche charizard like you know is like worse chi you in, in a sense like in terms of his breaking power is not really needed if you run choice specs then your times for wheat to rocks like come on now uh but yeah so salazzle's so definitely unexplored Definitely you not know, a mon that is standard on fire, but it can put in some work. But otherwise, yeah, it's frail. It do doesn't do too much. Uh, flying, on the other hand, a lot of these guys are C rank. Now, I'd, I'm not too sure if there's anything here that's like, um, you know, missing in terms of flying. Like, I'm going to have to see the list of flying to see if there's anything that went unranked. Uh, at the top of my head, Altaria is unranked, which again makes sense because Altaria is kind of just a, a bad mon in general, and things like Mask, like Masquerade should be ranked. Uh, I think at least in C tier. Like, how are you ranking? How are you ranking Vivillon but not Masquerade when Webs is actually a decently viable style for flying to run, especially when you know not many top types have access to like reliable removal or even removal in the first place. So you know. Uh, Masquerade should be C. Um, it's crazy to see how Juggalus is A rank on flying, but is C rank in dark. Now, obviously, they're completely different typings, and like you could say, oh, Hydreigon's just a better Juggalus, which again, I've agreed with in the past, but like again, I, I said Juggalus should be higher in dark, but yeah, uh, A rank here makes sense. Killer Watcher as well. Um, these S ranks are pretty much undisputed. You can't go with a good, you can't have a good flying team without Corviknight and Dragonite on the same team. Not gonna lie. And then looking into the C rank uh, side of things, um, yeah, I mean everything here pretty much makes sense. Like Salamence is literally worse D Knight. It does have s certain niches over Dragonite that I can fulfill, like Choice Scarf Moxie, but overall Dragonite is just a better Pokemon because Multi Scale is a fun ability. Um, but yeah, uh, other C ranks. Honchkrow, 
and Bombardier. I mean, you probably do have to rank these guys because they're not complete on Mons, but, you know, Bombardier probably should be a bit higher. Maybe B rank, it does offer flying the only hazards it has access to and is definitely more consistent as a Pokemon than Honchkrow. Like, Honchkrow is way too slow in this meta game right now bombardier has knockoff it also has like three stabs thanks to its ability so it gets rock stab so yeah otherwise not much else to change uh ghost now this is another type that a lot of people use so you know let's just get out of the way uh these three in s make sense weird to see how dragapult isn't in s either but at this rate like you wouldn't have anything in a rank but let's say we move dragapult up to s then A rank would definitely be Bramblegast, Skeledurge, and uh, Serilege. And then B rank would be like Frostlass, Gengar. And then C rank. No, you could probably move Sableye up to B in that case. Uh, and then everything else in C deserves to stay in C. So, I'm wondering why they didn't put Dragapult in uh, S rank. Like, these four on their own define Ghost. <laughs> like, it's crazy to see how Dragapult isn't in S. Like, the Mon is the fastest Mon in the tier. The fastest viable one, I'm gonna have to say viable before someone's like, oh, Electrode is faster than Dragapult or, so, or something dumb like that. Um, but yeah, um, in case of like the C ranks, I kind of agree with them. Like, Miss Magius is just worse, Gengar, Poltergeist, like a mon that relies on its sash very much on a type that has like only Bramble as its removal, like, not bad, but still, like, it's very inconsistent. Uh, Sableye and Spiritomb often fighting for the same slot because they share the same typing. But uh, Sableye is probably better because, you know, it actually enables ghost screens and stuff like that. Uh, Skeledurge needs to be respected a little bit. A rank for sure. Uh, his defensive profile is actually pretty cool. It can, it can actually check darks in certain 1v1s. Unaware is a pretty solid ability as well. You know, the amount of times that Skeledurge has actually saved me because of Unaware is insane. This mon deserves a bit more respect. So I'll definitely put that in A. But yeah, other than that, uh, what I'll say, Dragapult in, a, in, a, in S. Bramble in A, Skeledurge in A, um, potentially Serilege in A as well, and then Sableye in B, and that's it for Ghost, really. I don't think there's anything missed. I mean, or Kareo, uh, Sensu's not ranked here, which uh, I don't really care about, to be fair. So, <laughs> time to move on to Grass. Grass grass is pretty bad this gen or well, at least right now not a big the, not the biggest fan of grass but the, the s ranks make sense like you need these three on your team in order to actually have a decent grass team uh rotom mode toad school wo chen yep they, 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 live wo chen reaction let's go um now someone made a post about appleton here about how appleton should be a bit higher which i actually agree with like is basically a fire resist on uh on uh grass which you know grass doesn't have access to right now so you know or at least a new like it has is a resist that grass wouldn't have because obviously in the past grass had cray dilly which was obviously neutral to fire but appleton resists fire because of its ability thick fat so that's enough of a niche to put in a rank in my opinion and, and i do think it deserves a rank i did put in uh a rank in my head um C rank guys, Cacturn, why is Cacturn ranked? Uh, I'm, I'm very confused to why Cacturn is ranked. And especially in the same vein as Brute Bonnet. Like, what does Cacturn offer over Brute Bonnet other than Spikes? Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, like, I know there's Cacturn lovers out there, but what does Cacturn offer over Brute Bonnet? Like, this is the first time I'm standing with my man Brute Bonnet because I make fun of this one. I meme on it. I say it's called Unga Bungus. Like, I, I, I make fun of the Pokemon. Now, other than Spikes and Toxic Spikes, which Toadscrew has, and also has Spore, it's also faster. Why am I using Cacturn over Brute Bonnet? Please, e explain. Like, Nasty Plot? Nasty plot Captain. Uh, like, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, Captain deserves to be unranked. Like, it's just how it is. Brute Bonnet uh, probably isn't C tier at the end of the day because Wu Chen is also and Miascarada. Like, you're not running three grass darks on the same team. But um, yeah, Captain needs to be unranked for sure. Uh, ground. Let's look at ground. Um, Plotsa, Great Tuscan S makes sense. Makes sense. A rank. Gastrodon treads. Quagsad Ting Lu. You could argue and make a case for Tinglu in S tier, but like A rank is also pretty darn accurate. Garchomp, Palosan, and Sandy in B. Yeah, I I, I could uh, agree with that. I don't really see any, you know, anything wrong with that. 
And then C rank, we have Crocodile, Hippowdon, and Toad Scroll. Now, Crocodile is interesting. Like, I don't really know what this one really offers. Like, it is, like, decent speed control and can be a decent late game win con with Moxie. Like, against certain teams, like, that could actually just uh, do, like, wonders because the stab, you know, the dual stab combination, gr uh, ground dark is actually pretty strong. So, you know, uh, I, I guess Crocodile has a slight niche. Uh, at least it's not, like, Donphan or any of the other remaining grounds which probably have, like, zero niche to be run. Like, you're not running Mudsdale like, over any of these guys. You're not running Sandaconda over any of these guys. You're also not running Camera up, so, uh, ever, really. And Dugtrio either, like, none of those ones will ever get run on ground. Uh, so, it makes sense that they're not ranked. Uh, Ice. Now, Ice took a big hit uh, after Bundle got banned, but otherwise, we still have remaining Pokemon like Backscalibur and Chen Pao, which are the best ones. Makes sense. Obama Snow makes sense, even though I'm not really the biggest fan of having... Obama Snow as a hail setter, so there's things like that. Cloisters, your set of wing con can actually go special, so you know, there's things like that. Frostlass sets up spikes. Avalog is actually pretty darn bulky in snow, so it's fair enough that his B rank is also Ice's removal option, other than uh, Frostmoth. I, I, I believe Frostmoth still kept Defog. I'm just gonna have to double check that quickly. Um, so Frostmoth is still kept Defog, but yeah, those are your two removal options that are, uh, you know. Uh, Ice has access to, and then Rotom Frost is also like a decent special attacker, and then like the rest of these guys in C, they, it makes complete sense. Like Weavile is outclassed by Chien Pao, but it's still Weavile, so we're not really gonna unrank Weavile. Uh, Frostmoth a bit too niche, and then Crabominable. What does this mon do? Like, <laughs> well, I'm, I haven't seen a single Crabominable like ever, and I don't think anyone has ever considered using this mon ever. So at least this generation. So I'm I'm a, I'm a bit confused to why C rank. Uh, this time. Alright, onto normal. The worst uh, monotyping in Gen 9 right now, even worse than Rock. Let's look at what we have here. Now, in S rank, Blissey and Ditto makes obvious sense. Blissey is, is Blissey. Do I really have to go into too much depth of why it's the best mono normal? Uh, Ditto as well. Ditto helps out in, in any type situation, to be honest. Just being able to copy, you know, that Chen Pao when, like, there's no, like, you know, Sable out Spiritomb on Dark and then just Reverse Sweep with Sacred Sword. Like, you know, like, D Ditto is obviously the second best mon. Now, Psychos are in DD, Mousehold, Staraptor. I'm happy Mousehold is getting the respect it deserves because, realistically, you kind of have to respect this mon. Like, not every defensive Pokemon on any type is running rocky helmet right now so obviously mousehold can have a good time with tidy up plus population bomb it also has bite which is technician boosted so it's able to hit ghost types for super effective damage indeed he obviously is here uh because you know it's a psychic type is neutral to fighting it also helps out in that matchup um staraptor is like speed control is a flying type yeah so the a ranks are pretty accurate chan team b obviously makes sense is pretty much worse than blissey right now especially in like such a hazard sense trick uh, meta but um you know you still have defog very very and tidy up mousehold so it's not the worst thing in the world that chancy is you know more hazard prone than blissey but you know blissey is just a superior option right now pyro is in b and you have to respect pyro because you know like it helps in the steel matchup so you know is in b rank for a reason c we have um these guys which Honestly, I'll put Grafia and B just because of like that unburden, you know, psychic terrain team that you can run with in DD. So I do kind of respect that for Grafia. It definitely shouldn't mean the same rank as Kamala or Ursaring, to be fair. Like those ones don't really offer too much. That Grafia actually offers no more on a win con that it actually desperately needs in order to actually try and win some games against certain typings. So, you know, it's weird to see in the same rank as like Farijaroff and uh, Ursaring. So, yeah, that's interesting. All right, so for Poison, uh, S rank Amoongus and Clodsa, again, like, this is something that's pretty common knowledge if you've actually tried the types. Definitely one of the better ones because, uh, you know, Amoongus offers, you know, Poison, that ground neutrality, which, uh, you know, not many Pokemon offer on Poison now other than Haunter, which Haunter is ranked, so I'm happy that they respected that 
the only one that actually has a ground, you know, immunity on poison deserves to be ranked. And like, I always thought Haunter should be ranked because it's actually not that bad. I've actually tried it on poison. It's actually pretty cool. So yeah, um, that that's cool to see. But yeah, Moongus otherwise than that, you know, has regenerator, you know, is a neutral to ground. Uh, also has super effective grass coverage against ground. Could size like no you know different as well unaware has all hazards it has recovery uh glimora as well obviously for like poison ho this one is pretty good it also does like good damage if you invest in a special attack and you know having moves like you know power jump earth power which basically hits everything plus like sludge uh, sludge wave is, is good enough um scun tank in a obviously you know prevent psychic from you know going too off on poison of course you know um and yeah, it, it does well. I mean, the whole type does well versus fairy, but Skuntang's really just there as the psychic immunity for, uh, you know, poison, which is. It, it, it needs that. So it doesn't get, like, run over by, like, Psy Shock Mons, like, uh, Iron Valiant or whatnot. So there's stuff like that. Uh, in terms of C rank, which I want to focus next, because B rank I don't really have any issues with, like, is Gengar. You know, Gengar is always going to be a, a good Pokemon. Um, Rever Room, I, I think this needs a bit more experimentation, but. Like, I, I do think this mon has a good enough uh, potential, to be honest. Like, a mon with 119 attack, it has 90 speed and then shift gear. Like, you know, it's better Kling Clang if you really think about it. Or it... Or is it? Let, let's think about that. At least, at least Rubber Room has, you know, dual stab, which is, uh, you know, has Iron Head, has Gunk Shot. It does have good... Like, its coverage isn't the best. Like, it does have Zen Headbutt for opposing poisons. It has Bulldoze, but, you know, like, the coverage does let it down. But Amon, with those stats for Shift Gear, I can't imagine it ever being too bad. But, yeah, um, it is definitely inconsistent, I'll say that. But, um, yeah. Haunter, as I mentioned, is, is Poison's only way of, you know, being immune to ground. You know, actually has some decent bulk with an Evia Light. A decent bulk like it's still one with 45 base you know defense and 55 base special defense if i recall correctly so you know take that with a pinch of salt uh cool fish um have not seen a single cool fish this gen yet i mean it's it like it's toxapex but less bulky it does have it it doesn't have a you know regen but it does have uh you know normal spikes which uh you know toxapex doesn't have but other than that yeah, I don't really know what Coolfish is really doing. Uh, it's like a secondary spike, but even then, Glamora has hazards. Clotsa has hazards. It's just a bit confusing. Uh, Toxtricity, I, I can't say it's really too good on poison. You don't really need to run it, so that also makes sense. Um, Psychic, let's see what Psychic has in store. Hatterene and Ndidi, definitely the best ones. Hatterene, you know, handles dark types. Uh, Ndidi handles ghost types. You know they're, they're pretty good at what they do espafra assuming you don't face dark can actually just pop off really like it's a pretty you know snowball a snowbally pokemon like it's good enough to be considered banned from ou so you know it's gonna be decent and monotype it's just that D ghost and dark are too good of typings in the current meta so espafra doesn't seem as broken as it should be it's just that dark is way too strong uh Gallade, obviously is fighting type his new ability sharpness gives it a stab move that's stronger than close combat now doesn't miss i mean cc didn't miss before but more on the you know psycho cut versus then headbutt you know it's like like Gallade has moves that just don't miss now so you know it's pretty it's pretty good for it uh now it's interesting to see slow bro over slow king when on water which we'll get into soon uh that slow king is better than slow bro but it is interesting they both offer the same thing really like at least slow king has like pivoting with chili reception but yeah I, I guess maybe psychic needs that you know physical wall a bit more than you know water does because water obviously has things like don dozo toxapex quagsire gastrodon pretty fat pokemon uh b rank armor rouge gardevoir I mean, yeah, I don't think they're pretty standard. Like, God of War's sharing a type with Hatterene. It, it kind of already does. Hatterene kind of already does God of War's job of, you know, checking, you know, dark types. But Trace is a decent ability, I suppose. Like, you know, it could, it could, come, in use, uh, it could come in useful against, like, maybe, like, Chlorophyll Fire teams. Because, I'm not going to lie, Saki does have the best way of dealing with, like, Scovillain, for example. So, that could be pretty nice to see. Uh, and then C rank in DD female, the male one is just kind of better, always is, <laughs> you know, is the is the stronger one, is the faster one, like no 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 brainer there. 
Medicham, as much as I love Medicham and it's, you know, buff with CC, has Trailblaze to boost its speed. Gallade is just a more consistent Pokemon. It's a shame because I, I prefer Medicham. It does more damage, you know, it has pure power, which doubles its attack. So it's hitting much harder than Gallade can. But, you know, Gallade, you know, can officially run Scarf, you know, with Psycho Cart. It has a lot of moves that gets boosted by Sharpness, Leaf Blade, Night Slash, you know. Like, these are pretty strong, like, coverage options for Gallade. And Medicham is kind of lacking in that department. Like, outside of Dual Stab, like, Medicham only has, like, you know, elemental punches, which aren't that strong if they're not hitting super effective. But it's still pure power, so you kind of have to respect it. Rapska again, is a niche Pokemon. It's pretty darn average. Then it pains me to see Screamtail too, a solo, but again, Hatterene and Kanda already just does its job, you know, so there's not really much reason to run Screamtail. Um, Rock. Rock, is, Rock has, like, so little viable Pokemon, it literally goes down to B-tier. Like, you don't even have any C-tiers in Rock. You only have B-tiers, which is so hilarious, but... Yeah, these are obviously the S-rank Pokemon on Rock. Not not much else to really say. Rock is, Rock is in a dire situation in terms of its options. But yeah, Garganackle is obviously the best Pokemon on Rock for like it's not only at the top because it's first alphabetically in S, but it's because it actually is just the best Pokemon in Rock. You know, like Salt Cure is a crazy move. You know, its ability is also crazy. And Defense Body Press is a pretty solid win con. Like Rock is actually kind of scary to face sometimes depending on what type you're using like i was i was almost this close to like I, I had a close game with rock as with a dark team and assuming that like you know things like bandage Empower can actually you know like hurt rock pretty badly like and it was a decently close game like i i do respect rock a little bit and it's because of mons like gargan knuckle and uh, Glamour and even Tita to a certain extent. Even like Lycanroc Dusk. And I'm happy they put normal Ra Lycanroc here because a lot of people are really just trying to say Dusk was the only one worth using when you have a rock type with access to Sand Rush. Why wouldn't you use that one? Outspeed the entire meta game and potentially just Oko things with Band Stone Edge or Band Accelerock. Like, uh, a lot of people weren't really thinking with their brains when they were saying Dusk was the only good Lycanroc form. But yeah, normal Lycanroc is you know sand rush so there's that iron forms in b like is not an a it definitely isn't an a and colossal is respected as well because you know it has hazards it spins you know stuff like that and then the rest of the rock types well the only things that, that are fully evolved that aren't ranked here are sudowoodo stone jona and lycan rock midnight now out of those three mons uh sudowoodo is easily the worst and it's obviously uh, pseudo Udo because it, it does have stats. The B, the BST is 410. You know, your best stat is defense, which is 115. 30 base speed, no, no brainer. Lycan Rock, you know, a midnight sharing species close with Lycan Rock and Lycan Rock Dusk. So, and, and it's K, the worst one of the out of the three. So, you're not using it either. Then Stone Jonah. Shame, really, because Stone Jonah isn't like the worst Pokemon stat wise. It's just completely like min max like the first three of its stats are like good then it gets like no special defense and then it gets like a decent speed tier but otherwise like there's better rock pokemon to use forms normal like and rock i like i don't know if i'd rather use midnight than stun jona uh but yeah both of them are just kind of bad and then we have steel type we have uh these three which are s s rank like all steel teams kind of need these guys you know treads you know, it's a solid speed control option. You know, it spins. Corviknight is a good win con as well. Like, if you try and deviate away from defog sets, you can do pretty well with, like, Iron Defense Body Press. Or, you know, bulk up Power Trip sets. Because, uh, like, as much as Body Press is decent, like, if you face Ghost, then Corviknight is just kind of useless. And, uh, you know, against Ghost, you'd kind of have to rely on having things like King Gambit, which, obviously, you would have to, like, obviously, like, build... I keep saying obviously, but it's just that, you know, if you're running Iron Defense, Body Press, Corv, probably run Goldengo and King Gamma on the same team just to handle the Ghost matchup. Because having your Wing Con just completely do nothing against a certain type, you know, it's just things like that. A rank King Gambit, Klefki. Klefki gives screen spikes. It's a good Pokemon. King Gambit as well. Something that's been considered for a suspect test and like potential quick ban at certain points. So, you know, there's ones like that. Now, B rank is a bit more interesting because I think Loki Sizzles A in uh, Steel just because Banded Bullet Punch or SD Bullet Punch is actually pretty scary. 
Um, so yeah, I'll definitely put Scission A. Uh, Magnezone, his niche is not really as needed anymore, but it's still a decent Pokemon. Lucario also has like priority as well, also strong. Fortress and Bronzong are just like Hazard Mons and their bulky Mons for Steel, so you can't go wrong with that. Uh, Bronzong also has heat proof, so if you guys want to try and you know make sure Steel isn't completely steamrolled by fire, you can try heat proof Zong, which obviously halves uh, fire damage. And then we have um, you know Orthworm in C tier, which obviously has access to Shed Tail, so that's his niche done. Now, Tinkerton is missing from this, which is kind of insane how you don't rank Tinkerton. I, I think it does have some niche on Steel, I guess. But, like, it's still a mod that's like Gigaton Hammer, it has a decent speed tier. If you actually try and use like screen steel, with, like SD Tinkerton, I think it could actually be a decent, you know, setup sweeper. So, I'll definitely put Tinkerton in, uh, you know, C rank. Its defensive typing is also pretty solid as well. But I guess, I suppose, if you think about it, like, there's like Bronzong, Fortress, Iron Treads, they're better rockets than Tinkerton. So, and you don't necessarily need its offensive potential with a mod that has a 75 base attack. So, yeah, stuff like that. And finally, water. Now, when I saw this, I was like, Toxapex is an S rank? I was a bit shocked, but at the same time, it made complete sense because, you know, Toxapex is neutral to grass, is actually bulky, regenerated Toxic Spikes. You know, Toxic Spikes is very annoying for, you know, teams that have no hazard removal. Like, get a T-Spike up versus Dark, and they don't have a scan tank, it's just kind of over. So, there's things like that. Um... Dondozo, Gastrodon, Pelipper, all of these are A rank worthy mons on water without a doubt. B rank on the other hand, they have the wrong sprite for Rotom Wash, but anyway. Um, you could make a case for Azu moving up to A, but obviously like, I feel like A, these mons are obviously a bit more consistent, the more staples on the type where Azu is more like, it's not a bad mon by any means, but it, you know, it is a setup like Wincon or you can go Banded and stuff like that. Um, C rank, on the other hand, I haven't even considered using a, Lo a Lola Mola once uh, in this generation. I mean, sure enough, I'm not like a stall balance sort of player in general. Like, I just prefer my offense builds. But yeah, Lola Mola, Lost Scold is pretty passive, all things considered. I don't really think it's that good. Float tool, I mean, if you really want to try and make rain work, but like... I, I would even try and run Pelipper plus two Rain Mons because you just don't have enough turns. And outside of Rain, Float Tool isn't really too impressive. Gyarados, I don't know. Like, C rank makes sense to me, I guess. Like, you don't really need Gyarados on your team to really do anything, really. Slowbro is just outclassed by Slowking in a uh, way because you don't really need Slowbro where Slowking has, you know, the highest special defense and is actually pretty bulky if you invest uh, in Spadef. Uh, Taurus Water. Or uh, again, is the fighting situation is kind of out, is pretty much outclassed by Kokuevil since uh, Kokuevil is like the only remover that, uh, other than Tatsugiri, that Water has access to, and other than that, Taurus Water isn't really needed. And then Veluza in C tier, um, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Pretty hard to get that one going. All things considered, needs a lot of support in order in in order to sweep. But the one thing that Veluza does have is that it's good at beating ground. Now. Like, you're probably thinking water versus ground should be in water's favor, no, but like annoying, you know, water abilities that ground has access to that, uh, you know, even water has access to, e.g. Gastrodon, potentially water absorb Quagsire if you have unaware Clod, or, you know, uh, water absorb Clod, and you can swap their abilities around if you're running both of those Pokemon, but yeah, Veluza has Mold Breaker, so you can obviously bypass the water immunities and pretty much 6 0 ground if you are able to get up a uh, fillet away, so, you know, Veluza is definitely a mon that can do work, and I've put in the work with Veluza, but it is still pretty niche. But yeah, the, the Illuminati put up a decent, you know, viability rankings. There are some things that I would change. A lot of people have already been posting their thoughts on the viability rankings anyway. They, they, this was literally my reaction when I saw Electros in C. Like, Dragapult here has the perfect profile picture. Like, this was my reaction when I saw, uh, freaking uh electros in, in c and electric but yeah thanks for watching this video guys hopefully you guys enjoyed this one again subscribe to the channel join the kingdom 
you haven't already and let me know uh, if uh, you know i'm either just chatting rubbish about the illuminati's uh viability rankings or you think my tier list were accurate enough but yeah I, I do believe that some things do need to rise and drop in certain types but otherwise yeah i, I think it's a decent start for anyone that you know wants to try and play gen 9 monotype and you know the resources are here to find out what's good what's bad and uh, all of that stuff so yeah thanks for watching again and i'll see you guys in the next one peace